Hi, this is Jason Myris, and today we're going to be taking a look at a quick configuration for the Acusys XSAN A12S2 12 bay PCIe 2.0 RAID array. This is a really nice storage solution if you're working in creative digital media. It's very high bandwidth, and it works great with HD, 3D, 2K, or 4K material. That can be either file types that are compressed, like ProRes or DNX HD, or uncompressed, like DPX. One of the nice things about being PCIe 2.0 based is that the RAID array works really nicely with the switch. So this is the SW08Q4 PCIe 2.0 switch, which is basically a shoebox size device with a number of ports in the back. These are called QSFP connectors, and what you would do is take a number of these ports and connect them to your RAID arrays, and then the remaining ports would go to your workstations or servers. One of the things you can do with the switch and several RAID arrays is combine them into what's called a video post-production storage area network, or a SAN. What you would do is take your uh, single RAID array or several RAID arrays and bind them together using SAN software into a large single volume that allows your artists to work together collaboratively on a single pool of media at high bandwidth. If you're using OS X, a popular way to do this is with Apple's XSAN storage area network solution, or you could use something like SANMP from Studio Network Solutions, which is popular because it's affordable and easy to administrate. And you can also take a look at something like SANIT, which is from Acusys themselves. It's their storage area network solution. And it's a lot like XSAN in that it is a uh, file level locking storage area network software. Once you have your storage area network software, your switch, and your RAID arrays in place, you'll want to connect your workstations or servers using the Acusys uh, QSFP 4x PCIe 2.0 host bus adapter. This adapter goes into any 4x or faster PCIe slot in your workstation or server. But before you do that, you want to check one thing. There's a jumper here, and we need to assign this correctly in order for it to work either uh, with a switch or directly attached to a RAID. In our situation, we're going to be using it to attach to a switch, and so we want to set it to 1. However, if we were in a situation, situation where we wanted our RAID array directly attached to our workstation or server, we would set this to on. Once you have this installed, the last thing you need to do is grab your software package from the Acusys website. And so once you're here, you can go to the support tab in the download area. And you want to take a look at this folder here called Exasan. Exasan has uh, two folders in it, one for direct attach storage and one for SAN options. If you're doing a direct attach storage situation, you want to look for the folder that has your RAID arrays model number on it. When you're doing direct attach storage, the focus of your solution is going to be based around the RAID array. However, when you're doing a SAN, the focus for your solution is going to be based around the switch. We're going to be using the SW08Q4 switch, so we're going to open up this folder and we're going to grab the installer package. You'll see a number of other folders, but essentially the installer package combines the driver, the GUI, and the user manuals together into one convenient installer. So we're going to open this up, and we're going to see a Mac installer and a Windows installer. Right now we're going to complete the installation of the 3.1.1 driver on OS X, and then later on we're going to do an installation on Windows 7 64-bit. So once you have the appropriate driver package downloaded, you're going to take it and you're going to drop it on your desktop, and it's going to install like a lot of other software that you've worked with. So this is our initial window here on our Acusys RaidGuard X installer. It's going to install a couple of components, the RaidGuard X server, the RaidGuard X client, which gives us a nice GUI to configure our uh, RAID array and switch, and the ACS6X kernel extension, which is essentially the driver for our PCIe host bus adapter. So we're going to click Continue, Continue again, and what we want to do is just agree to the license, and if we want to, we can take a look and we can customize this, but because this is our first installation, we're going to need all of these components. So we're going to enter in our administrator password. And then once this is done, we're going to need to restart. Okay, so we're all finished. We've got our installation complete on OS X, and so now we're going to go through the same installation process on Windows 7 64-bit. Okay, so we're in Windows, and we're going to go through the download and installation procedure for our unified driver package for Windows 7 64-bit. The first thing we want to do is go to the Acusys website. We want to go to the Support tab, and then the Download area. In the Download area, we're going to look for the Exasan folder, and we're going to have two options a DAS folder and a SAN folder. Because of the fact that we're working with a switch, we want to go to the SAN folder and look for our switch model number, which is the SW08Q4. 
From there, we want to look for the folder for the installer package, which essentially contains the driver, the GUI, and the user manuals all in one installer. We're going to get the Windows installer for 64-bit OSs. And so this is the Acusys uh, 3.1.1 driver. We're going to download that, and once we have that on our computer, we're going to unzip the file, and we're going to have a folder with our driver inside. And so we're just going to double-click on that. We're going to accept our user account control. And here is our XSAN setup installer. So we're going to click Next, accept the terms. If we need to, we can change our installation folder. Okay, so we just installed our RaidGuard X client and GUI, and now we want to do the driver for our host bus adapter. Okay, so that's completed. So our driver for our host bus adapter has been updated, and we just click Finish, and we're all done. So now what we need to do is reboot, and what we're going to do is go into OS X. We're going to take a look at our configuration tools and RaidGuard X. Okay, so we're back in OS 10, and now that we've completed our driver installation and rebooted our machine, our next goal is to create the LUNs or RAID sets required for our storage area network on our array. Before we do that, we want to take a look at one thing. This is the PCIe connection on the back of the array, and if you happen to be using the array in a direct attach situation with a workstation or server, this will be the primary point of communication with the array when you want to configure it. If you need to configure an array in direct attach situations, all you need to do is go into your Macintosh hard drive, go into Applications, and take a look for a folder called RaidGuard X. This is the application we'll use when we want to configure the array, and this gives you the full suite of options available for uh, formatting and configuring your RAID. When we want to use a switch, however, if we take a look at it, on the back panel is a LAN port. And so the LAN port gives us access to a web-based administration GUI that allows us to access uh, switch specific settings as well as some basic configuration options that we can use instead of RaidGuard X to configure a brand new array. So what we want to do is configure that with our Macintosh now. So what we're going to do is go into System Preferences and under Network we want to choose an Ethernet port. So I have Ethernet 1 connected to uh, the switch with an Ethernet cable. And What we want to do is set our port for manual configuration. We're going to enter in two parameters. Our first is going to be an IP address. So from the factory, the switch IP address is 192.168.0.1. However, we can't use this for our Mac, but we do need an address that's similar for our Mac, so we're just going to go and add a zero. So this gives our switch and our Mac a unique IP address that's still in the same subnet. The next thing we need to do is add a subnet mask and that can be something simple like 255.255.0.0 and so now with those two parameters entered if we click apply we can see we've got connectivity to our switch. So now if we go into a web browser and type in our switch IP address we have access to our switches web GUI. In order to log in the username is admin and the password is going to be four zeros. And so now that we've logged in, we have access to our management area on our switch. So this gives us some access to some important things like our network settings if we want to connect the switch to a corporate or office local area network, firmware updates, environment data like CPU uh, and board temperature, as well as fan speed and status. Another thing that we have here is a quick setup area. And so the quick setup area allows us to do some simple RAID configuration like RAID 5 or RAID 6 with uh, RAIDs formatted and prepped for things like SANIT as a basic array for a SAN without metadata or with a SAN with metadata. And so this allows us to take an unconfigured array and configure it without having to go into RaidGuard X. However, if we need to do something more complicated, we're going to need to use RaidGuard X. And so we're going to take a look at that now. So if we open up the application, we see RaidGuard X essentially um, unpopulated. And so what we want to do is we want to start adding our controllers to this so we can configure them and create the volumes required for our SAN. So if we go into your controller and click Manual Add, one thing we can do is an ad add an IP address and password so we can log into um, our controllers. Now, when we're using a switch, the switch is the central point of control, and so that's the IP address we're going to want to add. Once we've done that, we click search, and we're going to see that um, RaidGuard X has pinged the switch, and the switch has returned a serial number. 
Then the next thing we want to do is add a password. Now because we're in RaidGuard X, the password here is independent of the password in the web administration GUI for the switch. And so by default from the factory, it's eight zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros. And we want to click add. So now that we've um, added our controller, we're going to start seeing uh, data for that controller and configuration options populate RaidGuard X. Once it's done updating, we're going to be able to go through all of those. Okay, so we're all set. So now our uh, controller information is uh, populated in RaidGuard X, and we can see that we have one large array, and these are all the parameters for the array. So this is our single array, but if we want to take a look at individual drives, we can click around and we can see the status area update with all the information for each individual drive as well. We also have a listing for drives, snapshot information, and an event area for the most recent uh, log entries. If we want to take and configure the array, we just go up here to create array, and we can see the full set of configuration options available in RAID Guard X. So unlike the web GUI for the switch itself, we have several more options for RAID levels, as well as some nice descriptions, sector size options, the ability to create spare drives, the ability to select our drives that we're going to use for our array, and then the initialization type. So if we want to just do a basic performance evaluation, this allows us to create the settings that we need on the array um, in the case that we might want to say compare the difference between RAID 5 and RAID 6 in performance. This is a faster initialization that keeps us from having to worry about committing the full parity data to the array, whereas an on-the-fly initialization is when we're ready for production, the full uh, table of contents and parity data will be written to the array to prep it for production. Once you've got your array settings completed and you want to create it, just click Array, Create Array, and you'll be all set. From there, we can also do things like delete the array, create email preferences for our administrator accounts for uh, notices, as well as some preferences for things like drive lag proof, native command queuing, SAN performance equalization mode, and a number of other things. If you need to know what these are, there's some nice descriptions here so you can see. And then last, we have uh, an option to do some maintenance, including slicing, LUN map, expansion, migration, and snapshotting of uh, volumes, as well as Health Center, which allows us to go in and uh, choose specific uh, drives or arrays so that we can rebuild parity data, uh, verify it, or refresh it. So once that's done, uh, you have two options. You can begin the installation of your uh, SAN with the SAN software that you happen to be using. Um, those are going to include utilities for configuring and creating uh, the LUNs appropriate uh, on the arrays so that you can stripe them and get them gathered together into your SAN volume. Or if you want to and you happen to be just using a switch in order to connect multiple arrays to a single workstation or server, you can go either into Disk Utility in OS X or you can go into the Disk Tools in Windows and you can actually manage the formatting of your array there. So if we take and we mount our volume, what we're going to be able to do is then go through and either erase the volume and do things like add um, the type of format we want as well as um, partition it or do anything else we want to like we would any other array. So once you're completed with this step, you're probably going to have a working SAN volume. In a moment, our array is going to populate on our desktop. If you've completed your SAN uh, software installation, your SAN volume will populate on the desktop of the connected workstations. And so you'll be able to begin working. So this was a quick uh, configuration guide for the XSAN uh, A12 RAID array as well as the SW08 series switch. And now that you have your uh, SAN configured, enjoy your new uh, XSAN storage system. Thanks for watching.